A word of caution, Lord Sovu. If my time investigating Darth Nal's work has taught me anything, she did not like visitors. I do not fear the dead. I knew the moment you asked me here, you finally understood your limitations. It is no secret. Your role in the hand of the Empire should have gone to me. You are clever, I'll grant you that, but weak. We were never truly equals. Your expertise does have its uses, however. Get on with it. As you wish. Of course you don't. The mouse shows some teeth. Amusing. But look at this. You've saved me so much time, Rivix. Don't do anything foolish. You're right, Sovu. We are not equals. But you do have your uses. Hmm. Priority message for the Commander. I found something very interesting. I don't fear the dead, either. Put it down. Of course. Tau Adair, isn't it? I'm not here to talk. What a shame. Would you look at that? Perfect timing. Ah, here we go. I've only just arrived, and you're already here to welcome me. Your hospitality is awe-inspiring. 
Speed it up, Rivix. You said this was important. What could be more important than appreciating good manners? This, perhaps. It belonged to Darth Null. About time you got to the point. What is this? I have a theory, but that is all it is. A theory. I brought it to you in the hope that you could confirm it. Colonel Gola and Talos Drelik have been hard at work, combing through everything we've found, using the data to pinpoint other locations that may have been under Darth Null's control. But their expertise only reaches so far. You, however, have specialists and resources at your disposal that could identify what we've found. If it belonged to an ancient Sith, then it's something Sana Ray should help with. Too bad she's on an assignment. There must be someone else. What about your fascinating hut scientist, Dr. Ogarub? He must have something in his bag of tricks that can tell us anything about this artifact. You have a point. Let's see if he's got something that can help us. Lead the way. I am eager to learn what secrets this relic may be hiding. Not now, Sahar. Just try. I know you have it in you. That's not what your precious Jedi said. It's what I'm saying. Found my way without your sorcery. Had to cut my slave collar with this. She gave me a choice. Die or fight back. I fought and I excelled, Sahar. The day I became a Mandalorian, I knew I found my home. I hoped you would find success. You always had fire. I had little choice. Some earn what they have. Some are given everything. And some lose it all. You dare speak to me about suffering? Even the best armor has flaws. Spaces between plates of Beskar steel where blood can be drawn. The events of Runic have shown me our flaws. I planned for Shevisla to find us. She did. I challenged her and was nearly defeated. An outcome that was not expected. How could my plans so miss the mark? I asked myself. I looked and looked and finally found my answer. Someone did not honor their agreements. Someone valued credits over their own life. Basque's son used one of his pretty machines to make sure I didn't win the duel. He died like a coward. Because of him, we lost Runuk. Because of me, we gained a great deal more. Sahar, can you come up here? This one brought me something taken from the clutches of Darth Malgus. Something so powerful both the Sith and the Jedi race across the galaxy to claim it. With Sahar's help, we can unlock its secrets. I told you, Hedda. We shouldn't do this. It's not safe. You're right. It's never safe to change a galaxy. 
Never easy to fight corruption and hypocrisy. But your brother said you would face anything to restore balance. Each of you will gather the resources needed to make my vision a reality. You will have your assignments, but none will know the whole plan except myself and Sahar. At long last, we will take back what is ours. I meant to say before, I ran into your old friend when I found Null's relic, Tau Adair. She put up quite a fight. She tries so fiercely to hide her contempt, yet she fails spectacularly. I know what you mean. I knew she was trouble the second I met her on Mech Shaw, and what she did on Corellia was overkill. No doubt we will cross paths with her again. I'm certain the Jedi will not rest until she has rescued the wayward Padawan. Over here! I do believe I've found something. Uh, but first, you must tell me more about this containment device you encountered. Uh, what did it look like? How did it work? The intricacies of the device were fascinating. I would be more than happy to go over the details. You said you found something, Ogarab. I want to hear more. Of course. If you can spare a moment, Lord Rivix, we can speak afterward. Until then, I performed a scan that can identify dormant energy signatures. Even if all that's left is the smallest trace, invisible to instruments you would find in more modest facilities. From the results, I can say with certainty that what you found is the remnant of a lightsaber. But there is more to the story. I've sent some of my best people to search for something substantial about Darth Null's history, and have heard nothing. Then this has just dropped into my lap. The answers we need do not always come when we want them. My equipment also found microscopic fragments of the lightsaber's power source. By all indications, the crystal used to construct the weapon originated in the Adika system. That is curious. Before recent decades, Sith did not typically use Adegan crystals. They were favored by Jedi in Darth Null's lifetime, if she lived as long ago as we hypothesize. So why did Darth Null have a lightsaber that was built like a Jedi's? A very pertinent question. Hmm. The answer may be more apparent than we think. We know Darth Null created the Children of the Emperor. Perhaps she used the crystals in her method of binding Jedi prey to her master. From everything I've heard about the Children of the Emperor, it makes sense. And who knows what else she designed that has yet to be uncovered. In theory, the possibilities are limitless from all she seemed to know. Someone who does not shy away from knowledge, no matter its source in order to create, to expand their awareness. It is admirable. I'm not sure the victims of Null's mind control techniques would agree, but I see your point. This might be the time to speak to Malgus again. You can ask about the interesting discoveries we've made here today. I can't shake the feeling that Malgus doesn't know Darth Null as well as he thinks he does. There's only one way to find out. I do not envy you having to attempt any sort of communication with that ill-tempered brute. Thank you both for your help on this. It has been my pleasure. I am more than happy to be of service. Now, Dr. Ogarob, about that containment device...
The chat you had with Dr. Ogura paints a better picture of what Malgus may have been up to. Darth Knoll's work on mind control says a lot, but combining Sith and Jedi toys? That's big news. Malgus following in the footsteps of someone with Jedi connections is a plot twist I wasn't expecting. Never mind Hedda Cole getting her hands on Darth Knoll's holocron. Malgus told us his plan will succeed no matter what. Which makes knowing what's on that holocron even more important, and he's our only lead. We're not running blind, however. What we learned about Darth Null's Jedi influence does give us something to go on, though admittedly not much. Heads up. Looks like we have a special guest. Tell these droids to get out of my way! I need to speak to Malgus. They answer only to the Empress and cannot be overridden, Shay. Some higher-up is all sweaty about my past contracts with Malgus. They've got no understanding of how those things work. One of those contracts was destroying the defense grid on Coruscant during an Imperial invasion. I was there to do a job. I did it and moved on. You should understand that. Perhaps, but permission to interrogate the prisoner is restricted to a select few. I'm going to find out if he's working with Hedda, with or without permission. She's the leader of the Mandalorians. Shouldn't she have access? She can take that up with the powers that be. Right now, we're wasting time. Yes, we are. Time you don't have. I need you to trust me. Like back on Runic. So, what's it gonna be? We'll work together on this. Smart move. Doesn't change the fact that Shay isn't on the VIP list. Then put me on comms. Comms? To listen in? More than that, Shay can give advice during my questioning. Malgus had a few bad habits when I worked with him. I'm betting they're still there. If you listen to me, we can trip him up. Risky. But the situation calls for it. At least we'll be in full control. If anything seems wrong, we can shut it down. Stay alert no matter what. I'm going in. You ready? Always. Bottom line, threats are useless against Malgus. He fears nothing. You keep talking about putting an end to what he wants, and we'll get nowhere. Make him think you understand. That's the key to getting anything out of him. If you just walked me through what it is you want, maybe I can help. Maybe there's another way to finish what you started. A way that others will accept. Few minds can comprehend my vision. There's nobody out there like you, but you're alone. That is a strength. Attachment becomes weakness. Good, he's talking. Risk a question. And how does Hedda Cole fit into all this? She doesn't. My designs are much greater than her petty civil war. The Mandalorians are fractured, a broken people. They struggle to decide who they are. An endless cycle of waste and fodder. Useless. Big talk from inside that cell. We fight for honor, for purpose. Not that I would expect you to understand. They only seek to fight their own. And when the victors emerge, they will turn their weapons on one another. Again and again. None of it will matter when the galaxy burns. I will tear apart the corrupt systems that allow weakness to infect the galaxy. 
I will stop the rot. I will burn down all of their failing legacies and see who embraces the flame. More of his mystical Osik. What about the Holocron? Does Hedda have something she can use against my people? Who whispers in your ear? Your thoughts are plain to me, Mandalore the Avenger. Your rage consumes you. There was a battle, and your prey slipped through your fingers. Your people are divided, while Heta Kull gathers her army. You are right to come begging for answers. Heta will destroy you. Where is she? Dingila Hutun, answer me! Can you not see it? The past looms over us all. A shadow of unchanging history. There are fools who believe they can outrun the shadow. Without a flame to chase it away, it will consume them. They are doomed to repeat the same failures. None who have stood by my side have understood this. The only one who could have is my enemy. A shame that you and I must remain that way. Nothing lasts forever. Greetings. I'm relieved you answered. I must make an unusual request. The bar for unusual is pretty low for me these days. You are correct. However, I thought it best to prepare you for what I need to ask. I have been summoned by the three. What they had to say has left me... disquieted. Meet me at these coordinates on Vos, and I will explain in greater detail. I sent you to look into the origins of one of Darth Null's relics. I haven't heard any updates. What I found... It is best if I show you in person. I will await your arrival. Vos. Hm. Well... At least it's nice this time of year. We have enough mysteries to contend with without getting the Vos involved. They're not exactly known for being straightforward. Sana Ray sounded unlike herself. I do hope whatever she has to tell you isn't too troubling. You're here. Sonare hoped you would come quickly. You're a sight for sore eyes. Glad to have you back. Thank you. I am glad to have returned. With something useful, I hope. Sonare didn't tell me you'd be here. 
You caught me off guard. I'm sure it slipped her mind. She has been speaking to some other Voss about something, and she has seemed unsettled. You have arrived. Good. I have been waiting to show you this. When we first uncovered the existence of Darth Null, I could not imagine that tracing the origins of one of her relics would lead here. The strange ruins Arkin found on the planet in wild space. They were resistant to his presence for a reason. But together we found something. What you are about to see. Darth Null possessed a talent that was unique among her kind. Through the Force, she could connect her mind to another's. Darth Null could speak to someone's most hidden desires. Reach depths of their thoughts they could not reach themselves. Over great distances, she could mentally bond with anyone who could feel the Force. In those who did not recognize their own abilities, she awakened that realization. Sharing this knowledge was unacceptable to those around Darth Null. She was ostracized, friendless. Darth Null took those who would follow her to an empty world in wild space, where they could do as they pleased, without judgment. Null taught her disciples how to forge mental bonds as she did. They called out to others and invited them to their sanctuary. But Darth Null was careless. She made contact with someone she shouldn't have. The Sith Emperor, as he was then. He took advantage of her mistake. He ruthlessly pursued her. Before the Emperor could reach her followers, Null locked many of their secrets away in the ruins Arkin found. Null and the others fought back against their captors, but their fate was sealed. The Emperor dominated the minds of her disciples, bent them to his will, enslaved them. After that day, Null's followers became servants of the Emperor, and she became Darth Null. If the Emperor made her Darth Null after she was captured, who was she before? She was no one. At least, not after she was expelled from the Jedi Order. You're telling me that Darth Null, the woman that Malgus blindly reveres, she was a Jedi? For a time. The account of Darth Null's removal from the Jedi is told from her own perspective. We do not know much about what transpired before that, other than what she was called, Master Renaya. Every time we learn something about Darth Null, it adds more pieces to the puzzle. And we still don't know what she did that inspired Malgus's plans. But now the truth has come to light. If Malgus wanted to hide it forever, he failed. All that you found about Darth Null, why did I have to come to Voss to hear it? After I heeded the Three's request to return to Voss, I heard whisperings. Rumors of a vision that caused great concern among the mystics. The Three forbade them to speak about what was seen. A revelation centered on Darth Malgus. Why won't the three let anyone know what's in this vision? It could be something that affects them. Just as they refuse to explain the contents of the vision, they refuse to give a reason. It is their right. The three know well the value you would place on hearing the details of this vision. But they would never share them with an outsider, even one of your status, unless you gave them a reason to. Can't you ask them about the vision? I... They would not reveal it to me. But there is another way. Despite our best efforts, some of our most sacred temples have yet to be rebuilt in the years since Valen's assault. The Shrine of Contemplation is too deep within Gormak lands. The work is slow, even with aid from the few Gormak who have chosen to continue their alliance with the Voss. The three are overseeing progress at the Shrine of Contemplation now. If you were to approach them 
and offer your assistance. Perhaps you will change their minds about the vision. You have a reputation of persistence and tenacity. They will not turn you away so easily. I've already made an impression on them. This shouldn't be difficult. It has been years since you first came to Voss. The members of the three have changed many times since then. But they all expect the same courtesies. Be conscious of the struggles of Voss. Be considerate of our views. Little else is needed. I'd like to speak with you for a moment, before you depart. Here are the coordinates for the Shrine of Contemplation. I will send a message ahead to the commandos there to expect your arrival. You wanted to speak to me about something? All this talk of visions, it reminded me. Something strange happened while I was away. As I searched Arthmol's ruins, every step I took felt so familiar. Like I had been there before. But you said there was nothing there. Why would you go there? That's the thing. I wouldn't have had a reason to. It was confusing, distressingly so. I was so certain I had stood on the surface of that empty world. Even though I could not remember when or why. I spoke with San Rey about this sense of familiarity. It didn't take long before she understood what I was feeling. I was there, in those ruins, once before, during the ritual in the Shrine of Healing. How is that possible? I am unsure. This realization awakened other memories of, of what I saw while the Voss healed me. I believed they were dreams at the time, but San Rey believes otherwise. She says they were visions. Visions of the future? Like the Voss mystics who performed your healing ritual? Yes. The very same. In the ritual, the mystics infuse part of their spirit with yours. It is not uncommon for a mystic's gifts to be shared with the one they are cleansing. They open my mind to unreachable distances. The past. What may happen. What never will. In truth, it is all still a blur. It was as if I lived decades in the span of hours. I saw centuries worth of horrors committed by my father. I felt the rage and the cruelty born of my desperation to please him. The suffering and the devastation I caused it was all made plain to me. When I learned what my father had done in Darth Maul's ruins, old fears resurfaced. I was afraid I saw those ruins because I was doomed to follow in his footsteps. But there were visions of hope as well, of serving a greater purpose. I saw the work I could do, how I could dedicate myself to atonement. Like helping you stop Darth Malgus, reliving that vision. It reminded me that I have far to go before I can be forgiven for all that I inflicted upon others. If that is even possible. But I am moving in the right direction. You can't always fix what's broken. Sometimes there's just too much pain to let go. I know. I will never expect forgiveness, or even acceptance from anyone I have heard. But I will cherish any that is offered. I don't think I could have ever seen things in this light without your help. There will never be enough I can do to thank you.
had hoped the Three's presence would encourage everyone to work harder. Nothing has improved. Give it time. The Three will grow tired of the delay, and they will make it known. Greetings. I am Maiton Ja. This is Kodum. Sonore sent word that you would be joining us. You keep the company of strange associates. I wonder, is it a testament to your character? Together, we, the Shrine Restoration Initiative, have rebuilt much of the damage inflicted during the Eternal Empire's attack. Many shrines in the vicinity of Voska are fully restored. We understand that you hope for an audience with the three. They are here but wholly consumed with seeing us expedite our work on the Shrine of Contemplation. Should you help us arrive at our goal? Tran viemongi ho vabaka vihutroi kwa tufulam. Ho sran viti mi kukonua. Kwantai lapa uat wanyam dan piokotova. They have lost control of the excavation droids. That is troubling. Wait. Before one enters the Shrine of Judgment, one must be cleansed. The workers perform this ritual before entering the Shrine. The outsider must do the same. The outsider will prevent any harm from coming to them. But unless the ritual is performed, desecration of the shrine is assured. I have faith that this simple task will not deter someone with your skill. I cannot force you to do the cleansing ritual, outsider, especially in this urgent situation. But should you choose to honor the customs of Voss, go to the Altar of Clarity, at the edge of the settlement. I will guide you through the ritual. the Altar of Clarity. To begin the ritual, gather sacred incense from those crates and burn it. Good. Now you must wash the ash from your hands. Use the base. Thank you, Outsider. You are free to enter the Shrine of Judgment.
Thank you, Outsider. Why is this happening? Quite come near, 
包你钱通都来拿哦。你讲我来打，我就怕嘛。讲你我系退休嘞，讲你个坏蛋，你为做大坏，来阿哥顺你来阿细哦。Then for for that man, Achnan took the country. They begot the Sephun. Then for for that man, Achnan took the country. They begot the Sephun. Who are Baska? Bam, give me one hand, throw one blow. The child drops ya. The Sephun, the corner guy, never ate Achnan in my time. Nigo ya kutobo, kum matwa tuang tan fuayamang, kum nigo huay ban nui chotai fai lai angor sun nei lam sao. Ang pa kinoto minfu drojin trang han, mambo mambo tur tulran kati kum inmu ko namba. Something that my knee how lame I am. Quite come near, bow the chin down, throw your arm. Who are Vasca? Bam, give me one hand, throw one blow. The jaw drops ya. They so fun, they go not on ever. They act not on the matan. Get the man that I love, boy. Damn muck. They so fun, they go not to never. They act not on the matan. Come, they go why? Bam, they will just die. Fire, lay on gore, soon they lay on sail. Then for for the gun, act not chalk on day. They be gore, they so fun.
you go away, that way, Chicago. Come on, me, why, hey, Triole. Then for you, for that hand, ah, non, chalk, country. Hey, they go, there's a fun. Then for you, for that hand, ah, non, chalk, country. Hey, they go, there's a fun. They so fun, dear con the da neva e at nan ni matan. Pumabaska, pam ki na kungam trom wan lao, the chao trocha. We so what, ding of tang mu. We go worry that way, chakandan. Kongi, why he triole. Nam Duak, the Kong Ropa, the Nin Kakamaki. Pumabaska, Pam Ki, the Kong Kam Trom Wan Lao, the Chao Trocha. We go worry that way, Chakanga. Kongi, why, hey, Triole. Then for you, for that hand, ah, non chalk country, they begor, there's a fun. Come go white man with your typhi, I am gore soon, I am sayo. Oh, kung kung sam, ha, doting, na mani, ha, lay my eye. Nay, so fun, dear, go na da neva, ay, at na na ni matan. Mi go worry that way, Chakanga. Kongi, why, hey, triole. Kongi, go, why, man, we chop thy file, I am gore, so nay, I am sayo. Yeah. <laughs> 
on the floor. Do you hear me? We can't have you running around messing things up. What did I just say about not moving? Stay put. It's for your own good. Heads up, we got an intruder! Stand down now! Time to die! Tulan <laughs> Nisafun Mambo mambam ter tulan kati kumimu ko nambam Niko wai tap wai chakamran Kongi wai he triole then for Vutatan Achnan Chok Tontai, Vebegor Nesafun. We are trying to repair the droids as quickly as we can, but their reprogramming has been extensive. It is complex work. Nesafun. There is a considerable amount of Gormak technology in this. How did the invaders come to possess this?
Kodam, choose your words carefully. What do you know about this? Huavaska, ban ki na kungham trong wang lao, the chao trucha. Ni go wai tap wai chakam ran, kongi wai he triole. That is encouraging to hear, Kodam. You are correct. The next step is to learn all we can about them. Our researchers will study this device and divine its purpose. Doing so will allow us to track the invaders and avoid unnecessary destruction. <laughs> Your actions have given us leverage in this fight, but the harm done has been extensive. Our work in the Shrine of Contemplation was already behind. Zerka's presence has thrown the reconstruction into chaos. Some damage can be repaired. But if we cannot complete the restoration, it will leave a lasting scar. Until the work has resumed, the three will not turn their attention to you. You are very skilled at what you do. Rare talent combined with training that sets you apart. Now, imagine you are part of a society that works to hone your abilities to a greater purpose. Our shrines are built for this singular purpose. But now those shrines, built over generations, are destroyed, reduced to rubble by the Eternal Empire. In that moment, it was as if our eyes were shut. We were cut off from our purpose. We do not restore buildings. We ignite our purpose once more. Until we find that light again, everything else, the invaders, the truce, the relics, is secondary. Perhaps. But as I said, we cannot risk chaos in the tunnels because of a random search. Never fear. There is much to be done. We need help in ways other than stopping the invaders. Offer your skills, and the three will notice. Do you understand? Huavaska, ban ki nukungham trong wang blau, the chao trucha. The importance of what they do cannot be understated. Now. I must update the three on the situation. They will be most disappointed to learn how the invaders obtain the devices we are researching. The Chao Trucha. No hung yek la mulo yumi. Vagi yuchep the tongue through him. Huavaska, ban ki na kungham trong wang lao. The Chao Trucha. Vaida the dang gorka de la vat. Ang pak kinoto mi tu. Drojin trang han. Then for Vudagan Achnan Chok Tontai, Vebegor Nesafun. You have been busy aiding the restoration efforts. I make no promises, but the three may grant an audience. Of course, if you provide additional help, they will look favorably upon any business you conduct with them. They did. I have their findings here. They confirm the purpose of the device, to locate objects touched by the Force. Oh, Kung Kung Sa, I'm noting the money. 
How lame am I? Why would an arms dealer like Zerka hire mercenaries to find these items? Why risk war for a remote chance of finding something they cannot use? An ugly thought, but I accept the truth of it. Once we became aware of what the device can do, we feared what Zerka might find in the depths of the Shrine of Contemplation. You should begin your search for the invaders there. Stop Zerka, and bring anything you find back to us. We have no time to play these games. In testing the device, we discovered things in the Shrine that should be kept away from Zerka. Do this for us, and your audience with the three will be secured. do good work. How you handled my incompetent colleagues back there. Beautiful. It will save me a lot of paperwork when I report back to Zerka. Why, thank you, 
No, I leave that to my companions. I'm here to navigate the ruins, spot the valuables, that kind of thing. But let me explain the situation, with a little added detail. The Voss keeps all kinds of dangerous objects lying around. That's why we're both here, yes? We know some would make powerful weapons. In the right hands. The Gormak understand this. I do have to hand it to them. Their ways with technology are impressive. Second only to Zerka. They could turn the right artifact into a new balance of power. Temper! Surely you want to know the importance of what you've stumbled upon. What you have there is the prize. It's a record of the Jedi's influence on the ancient Voss. Normally I don't need an armed escort to retrieve historical documents, but in the right hands, this one could severely undermine the truce. We get the Voss and Gormak fighting again. This world is open to Zerka operations, weapon sales. Oh, the possibilities are endless. It was easy. Everything is. When you know the right people. Now, I do need to be on my way. So I'm going to hand this chat over to my good friends here. It's been a pleasure. Where have you been? I look forward to hearing them. Kodum is right. You have done much to be commended for, outsider. The three have taken notice of the progress the initiative has regained. They know who deserves the credit for this accomplishment. What you've done here may seem insignificant when compared to your other accomplishments. But I assure you, you have left quite the mark on this project. Because I appreciate all of your tireless efforts. I am compelled to warn you, through your decisions, you have given Kodum much power in the Shrine Restoration Initiative. I understand your reasoning for this. The three may not. You must prepare for this eventuality when you meet them.
It is time. The three have asked you to appear before them. I will not judge your decisions, but you cannot expect them to understand what you have done. Be prepared to face their displeasure. They are waiting for you now. Why did the three call you here? What did they want to talk to you about? A question I have delayed answering for too long. What are you talking about? When the Eternal Empire threatened the galaxy, my presence in your alliance was understandable. But much has changed. The Outsiders' wars no longer concern Voss. We have our own struggles. The three want to know why I do not return and continue my duties as a mystic. Do you recall when I told you we had fulfilled my vision for the Force Enclave? That was the last of my visions that had been deciphered by an interpreter. And the first step toward acting on my own decisions. And a Voss who chooses to remain with outsiders. Is a Voss who is forever looked upon with doubt. I won't turn down your help, but I don't want to cause problems between you and your people. You bear no responsibility in my relationship with the Voss. The choices I have made are mine, and I do not regret them. You have given me the opportunity to lead, to help others face uncertainty. That is a greater purpose than I ever found as a mystic. I have kept you too long. The three will be wondering what has delayed you. Outsider, do you understand the importance of this meeting? This isn't my first audience with the three. I met with your predecessors without incident. I think this will go just as well. Everything you have done prior to this gathering leads us to believe otherwise. If we thought it could remedy our troubling circumstances, we would have had you removed from Voss. But we hope that after hearing what we have to say, you may consider your actions more carefully. There has been a vision. Its contents are disturbing. Life will be reshaped. Scales unbalanced. A wave of change rises and falls beyond the reach of Darth Malgus. And as he dreams, he awakens a great power. One that will tear the galaxy apart. Pretty words, but I was hoping for something I could use against Malgus. It is always useful to be prepared. That is the gift we offer you. Should Darth Malgus perish, this catastrophe will transpire more quickly. I don't understand why you're keeping this vision a secret. To protect Voss. You are familiar with the visions experienced by our mystics. The role these prophecies play? You'll have to explain it to me. The mystics' visions are our guiding principles. They are infallible. Our ideals, our laws, are shaped by them. And from these revelations, the interpreters show us the path the decisions we must make to preserve our home, our way of life. But in this vision, we see no outcome. There is nothing to guide us. 
The interpreters are united in its meaning. The three. The Voss. We can do nothing. We are powerless. This shrouded prophecy will come to pass. The foundations will be shaken. The pillars raised. The chaos is unavoidable. But whatever is to come from this, it is you who will choose the fate of us all. Our destiny is in the hands of an outsider. Do you see why we shield our people from this? You shouldn't lie to them about this. Your people are capable of protecting themselves, but if they don't know about this vision, they won't be able to. Your counsel is not wanted or needed, outsider. You have your own troubles to face. Whatever part you play in this, enemy or ally, none of it will happen without you. You must be ready. We will be waiting.